All right, I got the definitive do not draft list for Fantasy Football League. Don't, or else, okay? The first, I can't believe I'm saying this, it's, it's B. John Robinson. B. John Robinson's one of the best runners in the history of college football, and it doesn't matter. Drafting a player in the first round of your fantasy draft who has never taken an NFL snap is never a good idea, even when it works out. <coughs> Saquon Barkley. <coughs> Remember that? But at least we knew that Saquon Barkley was a prolific receiver. B. John Robinson has theoretical receiving upside on a team starting Desmond Ritter that projects to finish bottom three in the NFL in pass attempts. Oh, but, but th th there's no target competition. Don't worry. Uh, well, except the, the top 10 pick, Drake London, the top five pick, Kyle Pitts. Oh, but that's it. That's all. No, 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 nothing to see here. Where are the fantasy point scoring opportunities going to come from for Bijan? If not in the passing game, the red zone? Well, he was banished to the NFC South, the division that will score less points than even the AFC South. And Atlanta is now committed to this ground and pound attack, which is a great catch 22 for a running back. Because sure, Bijan could lead the league in carries between the 20s, but that's the stone worst method for scoring fantasy points. The situational math just doesn't add up. I love Bijan, and had he gone to Dallas in the first round, I would be drafting him. But the thing is, he went to Atlanta, so I'd rather have Tony Pollard. Now the next guy that I'm not drafting in rounds say two and three because we're avoiding Bijan in rounds one and two is Calvin Ridley. He's had one good year. He was the wide receiver four in fantasy football and he hasn't crested 900 yards since. His current ADP for fantasy hinges on two factors that 2020 boom season and the first round draft capital. Too bad he's gonna turn 29 this year and he was signed to just $11 million, which is 3 million guaranteed less than Zay Jones and 26 million guaranteed less than Christian Kirk. It's years since he was drafted in the first round. Since then, he missed half of a season because of a mental health break. And then he missed a full season as he was suspended for gambling. And his last game was October 2021, and he had 26 receiving yards. Here are some of the players who've missed one and a half seasons and then returned to the NFL. Michael Vick, yay! Le'Veon Bell, ooh! Randy Moss, ah! Josh Gordon, ooh! Vick had his best season as an Eagle in 2010, so that worked out. The other guys flamed out due to age and the trials and tribulations of life. So perhaps Ridley's gambling was self-medicating. I get it, but I'm not a doctor. But I am a movie fan, and I've seen this movie before with Josh Gordon. A troubled man who is struggling with demons throughout his time in the NFL. The bottom line is, you need to factor in both on-field and off-field knowledge when making a fantasy football decision. Calvin Ridley is skinny Josh Gordon. When Josh Gordon was getting steamed up draft boards, the risk was never worth the upside. Ridley's ADP is based solely on one volume-fueled season with Matt Ryan when he led the league in pass attempts, while Julio Jones was hobbled throughout the season. Since then, Ridley has been grossly inefficient or just not playing football at all. So this guy, I mean, this guy, this guy's a third round pick on underdog, this guy's a fourth round pick at the FFPC, fade. Down the garbage chute. And fade Alexander Madison. Do not draft Alexander Madison. Do not draft in Ridley in rounds three and four. Don't draft Madison in rounds five and six. The guy put up .73 yards per route run as a receiver last year, which ranked number 84 in the NFL. So he's inefficient out of the backfield in the passing game, but what about as a runner? Oh, one breakaway run in 74 attempts last year, that was 1.4% breakaway run rate for Alexander Madison. He was a red zone volume monster. That's how he scored fantasy points. 20 red zone opportunities in 90 total touches. So before drafting a player to be a fantasy starter, the first question is, is this player good or is this player bad? And Alexander Madison is not good. If you're gonna draft a running back in the middle rounds, the dead zone, focus on Cam Akers. He's actually a good runner. Focus on Rashad White. He's actually a great receiver out of the backfield. 
on a projection standpoint, Rashad White is owning this backfield. We have him for a 9% target share. He was RB12 last year in targets. He had 58 targets as a rookie. And we're only going to see that go up. Look no further than the Vikings backfield. Alexander Madison is the best at nothing. Kenny and Wong use better on special teams. Ty Chandler's more explosive in the passing game. I mean, he's flashed a, a sub 4 4 40, had 1,300 plus all purpose yards at UNC. Dwayne McBride is a better pure runner. He was top five in college football and broken tackles per touch. And he rushed for 3,000 yards in the last two seasons. Alexander Madison is the quintessential dead zone running back if you must go running back in those rounds acres and white are far superior options and that takes me to quentin johnston quentin johnston shouldn't be drafted in season league shouldn't be drafted in best ball shouldn't be drafted in dynasty his profile is a problem because we look at comps back through time the last 10 years all the comps are bad look at dominator rating athleticism Breakout age. Go conference by conference. Conference USA. Kevin White and Brashad Perriman. Pac-12. Jalen Strong and Nikhil Harry. Big Ten. Paris Campbell and Devin Funchess. The ACC. Martavis Bryant. Stephen Hill. John Baldwin. Big 12. You got Hakeem Butler, but also at TCU alone, Jalen Rager and Josh Doxson. SEC. Dante Moncrief. Justin Hunter. Chris Conley. That's before we talk about LaVisca Chenault, Denzel Mims. You look at breakout age, dominator rating, all underwhelming. The agility score was putrid. The burst score was exceptional. These are the players that Quinton Johnston compares to. And then when you look at the Breakout Finder app, it shows that college rushing and special teams matters. See Cooper Cup. See Debo Samuel. They're real positive indicators for future breakouts. The problem was Johnston showed a complete lack of versatility in college with zero special teams production, almost no rushing production whatsoever, and a completely limited route tree. Just slants, goes, bubble screens. Slants, goes, bubble screens. Like a lot of explosive wide receivers, Johnston is a yak gobbler, and he can transition upfield quickly, pick up chunks of yards, and then break tackles. Like, I get it. I get how he won. Quinton Johnston is slow Brashad Perriman. The analysts won't tell you that. They'll say he, he's got deceptive speed or he, he's got football speed. But like Kevin White, Johnston was never developed at the college level with a complete route inventory and it's going to be a major wake-up call when he hits the nfl simple slants will not leave him wide open and those four five wheels are not enough football speed to create deep separation this is all before we talk about the famously shaky hands evidenced by those eight drops in just 13 games that's more than one drop every other game which would have led the nfl so let me get this straight if Johnston miraculously gets faster and learns the nuances of route running, he's still more likely than any other receiver in the NFL to get that target and drop it. Do not go in there.